And welcome to our post-game coverage of the 60th annual ACC basketball tournament here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm the coach, Dick Cox, joined by Barry Tony. Now, coach Tony, when we came in, everybody thought it was going to be the Miami Hurricanes playing the team from North Carolina in the championship game, but not the North Carolina team that everybody expected to be playing on Sunday. Hey, you're absolutely right there, Coach, and I tell you what, uh, kudos goes out to the Tar Heels. Looked like they really put it together. Looked like last night they didn't play play very well, but I tell you what, today they they look very sharp today. I tell you what, game one today was NC State versus Miami. Everybody thought the NC State maybe had got their second win, a second chance after not winning the regular season championship like everybody predicted. They were given a second chance, and they were looking for a second chance to play Miami as they got beat on a tip-in the first time and only time they had played this year, though. But you got to credit Miami. They came ready to play today. Outstanding performance by Scott as he scored 32, 23 by Shane Larkin, they put 55 points on the board, though. They looked like they were the deserving ones of being the regular season champions. Hey, absolutely, they're coaching uh, the times. You know, North Carolina State made a run it, within no time flat. Uh, Miami, they, they jumped out and got got big leads. And today, they, they really showed the reason why they were number one seeds. And it looked like, uh, you know, starting out there, Coach, it looked like State was a li- little slow at pace. You know, they, they cranked it up a little bit later on. But, but like every time it got close, Miami, they put that thing in high gear and they'd be off and running. Had a chance to talk with Kenny Kashi after the game. Was asking him about that where, you know, NC State was really looking for the rematch game. Again, they felt like this is their chance to step up and win the championship they should have done in regular season. Was that a little extra motivation? And he said, yeah. Said that, you know, they wanted to play good, but said also it was a motivation. Miami has never played in the ACC championship game before. This is something they really wanted to do. It's something they really wanted to win. And again, and they have made the steps. They have done what they wanted to do. They said they felt like the number one seed ought to be in the championship game, and they've accomplished that goal so far. Hey, you're absolutely right there, Coach. And I think a lot, a lot has to do with uh, mental and physical a- attributes because, you know, some of the team, you know, like, like State, they were mentioned about, you know, being, being a little tired and all. But, uh, but you know, everybody has to go through the same thing. So you, you got to give kudos for the, for the Hurricanes. They certainly came to play today and. Uh, they meant business, and that should be some kind of matchup tomorrow between them and the Hills. NC State will sit back now and see what their assignment will be for the NCAA tournament starting next week. They finish up 24 and 10 right now. They were paced today by Scott Woods with 21 points. Also had double figure scoring by CJ Leslie with 14 and 13 by TJ Warren, though. But this is a team that said they were disappointed because they felt like they had not accomplished the things that they, they, thought they would accomplish and the expectations people thought they'd have them, again, they've got something to prove in the NCAA tournament. Hey, you're absolutely right. And I tell you what, one, one thing about uh, Miami, which I was kind of surprised that day, you know, uh, yesterday looked like State's inside game really took control of uh, Virginia. But, but today they, they had trouble with uh, Miami's inside game and with with Larkin and Scott, you know, two, two of the, the best uh, backcourt duos in the country. Like you said there, Coach, they put, they put up 55 points. So they – certainly have an inside and outside game and one thing i think miami's got also too i tell you what they get they get after pretty good defensively too so they're going to be a force to be reckoned with the second game today is two teams that have been hot over the last couple of weeks uh maryland taking on north carolina and this was obviously not the same maryland team we saw last night they lacked the energy they missed a lot of easy shots last night they were 23 out of 25 from the free throw line 92 percent they missed free throws today they missed layups and even mark Churgeon said the excitement of beating the number two team in the country last night in north carolina and all that they just didn't sleep and and they got off to a bad start today they trail i think by as many as 13 but made a heck of a run to get this thing back close at the end and missed the three that could have possibly forced over Hey, you're right there, Coach. What's that old saying? Sometimes we we talk about you can't think too far behind. You can't look ahead. You got to focus at the at the, on the moment. And you know, Maryland, they they came out you know kind of way you know State did. Like you said, there, Coach. You know, they were like uh, the Tar Heels. They were one one step up. You know, getting all the loose balls and and the hustle points. But you still got to give uh, Maryland credit because at the end they still had an opportunity to uh, knock down a shot and maybe go in overtime. So. Kudos goes out to uh, Coach Tur- Turgeon and the and the program because they they really played well for most of the game after they got 
straighten out. Another good effort tonight for the big man, Alex Lynn, with 20 points, seven rebounds. Nick Faust chipped in with 17 points from Maryland. And Des Wells, who had the huge night last night, finished with 15, though. But the Tar Heels also with balanced scoring, though, that they had three, four people in double figures. They had two with 15, Bullock and Strickland, I think, both had 15 each, 13 each from McAdoo. And Harrison, who was a guy that did not even know if he was going to play after receiving eight stitches in his hand last night, heavily taped in the non-shooting hand. But also, you know, we know that that has nothing to do with shot, but it has a lot to do with catching the basketball. And that can be a problem, too, with that, though. But, again, Roy Williams actually said that he showed a little toughness, which he said that he's normally a pansy, but said that he showed some toughness today there. And, again, coming through not only scoring, but in a leadership capacity, too. Hey, you're absolutely right there, Coach. I think a lot of the, you know, the Tar Heels, even, you know, a lot of, you know, they do have some seniors out there, but they got some young kids, that, you know, to, to be able to go through what they're doing. I, and I was really impressed with their point guard, Paige, you know, toward the last stage of the game. He came up and made uh, two, two big baskets for them. And, uh, you know, just it was a, a total team effort by the Tar Heels, which uh, they looked a whole lot better today than uh, last night. And, I, and I'm sure, you know, there were some uh, words mentioned in the post-game interview, too, about, Coach Williams, you know, he was talking about how bad, you know, Miami had beaten them. So I guarantee you they're going to be some uh, incentive to try to put one on the Hurricanes tomorrow. Miami law won twice by huge scores over North Carolina. Big margins there, kind of name your own score down in Miami with a lot of laughter, taunting type things and stuff going on down there, though. So they're playing again in North Carolina. We know this place is going to be predominantly in light blue tomorrow. Will not be a whole lot of Miami fans here, though. Will be a home game for the Tar Heels, but it should be an interesting game to see what happens. Coach, you're absolutely Right, and if you look around uh, Greensboro Coliseum, what's the color of these seats? Down here are blue, and the very ones <laughs> at the top up there are green, and that's about where people will be sitting. Anybody in the top will be green Hurricane fans, while the Tar Heel fans will be wearing blue courtside. But, but Coach, I guarantee you, you know, the, uh, the, the seating is, you know, the crowd has been great here at Greensboro for the tournament, 22,169. And I dare say tomorrow, hey, it's going to be well over that, that figure probably because People are going to be coming in, and uh, but, my, but Miami, you know, they're very experienced, and I look for that to be an outstanding game tomorrow. One more note on Maryland. Maryland finishes the season up now at 22 and 12, and they will sit back, and this is going to be a long day for them today or tonight and tomorrow to see if they did enough to get in the tournament. I personally think with two – signature wins over Duke this year and the, the type of basketball they were playing at the end of the year, I vote them in if I'm on the committee. Uh, again, I'm not on the committee. Nobody asked me, though. But I think that they have made a great run here at the end of the year. They're playing good basketball and I think they would represent the ACC well in the NCAA tournament. Coach, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in the same boat you are, too, because I tell you what, the, the Terrapins, they really have uh, gotten after it and played extremely well. But, you know, when these decisions come out, you know, used to they, they said a lot of decisions be made on the road to the final four of these teams of how well they've done the last couple of weeks. But now they, they said they've kind of gotten away from that. But but I think Maryland, hey, they if they got in that term, I tell you what, they, they, they'd do well because they're, they're a strong team. they got inside play as, as well as outside. And I like the way Coach Turge and the way he, he coaches. He, he has a lot of energy and excitement to the team. And, and the players, they feed off that too. And, again, this is kind of an interesting, I guess, exit because they will be leaving the ACC. Uh, I know they would probably would like to have had one last chance, maybe won a, a tournament, made the championship game. But Maryland will be missed in the ACC. Oh, you're absolutely right. And, uh, Coach, you know, at halftime they were honoring, you know, some of the Hall of Famers there. And I was glad to see one of my favorite coaches, which I like. I like old, uh, Coach Gary Williams. That man could sweat through a I suit, could he? He can, but, but he puts everything into it. And, and Coach Turgeon, I, I see a lot of similarities in it, too. He, he doesn't just sit over there on that bench and let time go away. A lot of times it's, it's almost like having an additional player out there. I've seen him on that court hooting and hollering and exhorting his team. Well, that's going to wrap it up for semifinal Saturday here from the Greensboro Coliseum. We'll be back tomorrow to bring you our championship report. You have been watching our postgame report of the Coach's Corner live from the Greensboro Coliseum. I'm the Coach Dick Cox. This is Coach Barry Tony. We will see you tomorrow for Championship Sunday.